Today I want to show you guys the difference between the two dial combinations on the most coveted, desired sports model that Rolex produce. The Rolex Daytona was first produced in 1963. It was originally produced for people wanting to use a watch for timing purposes. What I mean by that is for people that wanted to use the stopwatch function for flying and also for racing for timing cars hence the name the rolex daytona it is honestly the coveted most desired watch you will ever hear anybody want to buy buy and aspire to buy so the two i have in front of me here are the model reference 116500 ln one comes in the black dial and one comes in the white aka the panda these two watches are currently around about 12 6 list from memory and they retail to give you an idea on the open market between 25 to 30 and 30 to 35 the panda dial is always the more desired one for collectability and price wise but they're both as desirable to wear so most people will pay the extra price for the white dial and i'll show you why in a minute. So the Rolex Daytona is a 40 millimeter watch. It has the two pushes on the side, so the two chronograph buttons. It's an extremely slim case. It also has the polished Centrelink Oyster bracelet with a double folding safety clasp. If you ask anybody about Rolex and the model they want, I'll guarantee 90% of people will say they want the Rolex Daytona. The watches I've got put away in my safe for investment purposes are the stainless steel Rolex Daytonas. I've got some put away for the girls and put away for investment purposes because there's no better investment on any model that Rolex produce and demand as the Rolex Ceramic Daytona. So to give you an idea on price wise, these were both first produced in around 2016-17 around that time we were paying as dealers i think list was around nine grand we were paying as dealers around 12 to 13 grand for them i always remember a client came to see me six months after this time period and he had the white panda dial on and i said stunning watch you know what did you pay for that he said i bought it off so and so and i paid 17 five for it and i was like you've paid all the money and at that time he actually had but look at history now so these particular models on the current market that's a 30 to 35k that's a 25 to 30k model so you can see and then that time frame of five years how much has actually gone up in value yeah. I did, I said it to him, I said, you paid all the money. Yeah, you paid all the money, which you did. You bought a watch find, I didn't want to say it, but we bought a watch find for 17 and a half. So just to show you guys what the Daytona is actually made for, I'll pick one up here, I'll pick the black one for example. And all I'm going to do is give it a quick wind. I'm going to set it, and then I'm going to show you the chronograph functions, which is the start, stop, and reset. So I'll just give that a little wind there just to get it going. And then the top one on here, so this particular one pusher here, if we just open that up. And that is the stopwatch start function. So as you guys can see there, hopefully it will be starting to go around the dial. And then use the same button to stop it. So we press that one to stop it there. And then we undo the bottom button there. And then press that and you'll see it reset back to 12 o'clock. So that is the purpose of it. That's what the extra two sub dials for as well, they're for timing. So as they elapse, they will move around the dial and they'll give you an accurate timing for minutes and hours. The bottom sub dial on this particular one on all Daytonas, but a lot of people don't realize is when they're buying a Daytona, I've had calls before from clients who have said, it's the watch isn't working, the second hand's not working. Well, most people aren't aware that the second hand is actually the bottom sub dial there, as you can see. The actual large hand that we've shown as the chronograph function, that is what that is for. So we advise clients not to use that as a timing method because it does drain the movement and it will affect your timing of your watch so it might affect the configuration of plus or minus five seconds a day for all the watches modern ones now are plus or minus two seconds a day so it will affect that timekeeping so we advise you just use it as a stopwatch only and use the actual sub dial at the bottom which is the accurate one and what it was designed for as the seconds that's what that dial should be used for so yeah we do get that question quite a lot but that is exactly what it should be so let's try them on the wrist and see what you guys think of the different looks for each watch that one's well nice though isn't it Oh, it's different gravy. You need to keep that. It is different gravy. Well, my very good client, my number one client, is begging me to sell it, and I don't want to sell it. I honestly don't want to sell it, and I just told him no. And yes. now, and I, I, I rang him about something else the last couple of days, and I asked him for now. <laughs> I think he's sulking. <laughs> this is NFS, not for sale. So hopefully you guys can see there. This particular one with the black dial is one that you're probably going to see more of out and about on people's wrists. Just purely because some people will not pay the premium for the white panda dial. They will actually just prefer that for wearing reasons. But what I will say is, and hopefully it'll pick up on camera is, the actual black dial wears bigger than the white. And what I mean by that is, the white dial does actually look smaller than the black. So when I, when I swap them over, and I'll hold it hopefully in the same place so you guys can see, but the white dial does wear smaller than the black. So a lot of people would prefer that because it does wear slightly bigger. So hopefully you can see there what it looks like on the wrist and then the clasp underneath right so we'll try the white one on let you guys have a look at that 
So just these two are both fully stickered by the way. So extremely good collectors and investors pieces. So hopefully you can see that there. So this has a beautiful white dial. It's almost like porcelain white in color. The predecessor to it, the pre-ceramic, the 116520 had more of a creamy white dial. So this is extremely a, a bright white dial, but it is highly sought after and obviously for a reason you can see there against the black ceramic bezel, the nice contrast that you've got. How nice does that look? And there's the clasp. And I think what I'll do is I'll put them on both side by side, give you a good comparison. So I would be interested to know what you guys think of the different variations, which one you would choose and why. Most people are always gonna say the Panda because obviously it's the one everybody says you should buy and the investment side of things, but I honestly should always believe you should wear what you want and what you like first and foremost, which I have said in a lot of other videos, you should always buy what you like. Me personally, I'd be happy with either. If I had to choose one, I would definitely choose the Panda. So the ones I've got put away for my investments are the White Pandas, but don't be guided by me. You should always go for what you like, but you know, the Panda is for me the outright winner, but Definitely let me know guys what you think.